now into the uh, the next session. And we want to talk to an extraordinary company that's based here in New York City called the Proficient Lab. It's a digital health platform for people who are developing molecules and, and devices and need a lab management system to do so. And we're really, really happy to have with us the CTO and co-founder, uh, Stas Levich, and, uh, who is also from New York City, uh, Ukrainian national, and is going to talk to us a little bit about the platform and what they've done to uh, bring it to life and to now scale it. Stas, welcome to the program. Great to see you. Thank you, Ness. Thank you for having me. Now, if you could, just give everyone a one-minute thumbnail about your background. I mean, you've done it better than I have, honestly, but I am Stas Levich. I am the CTO of the Proficient Lab, and we're a company trying to bring modernization and standardization into laboratory training and compliance world. My personal background is in government, so I have kind of a lot of experience in, in, in this kind of bringing something that was an inefficient and ancient process into the digital modern world. And, and that's what we love about the, your background. It's so eclectic and it really does speak volumes about just the person you are and getting into healthcare and really looking at how to be a contributor and be a part of an ecosystem to bring better care to patients and really appreciate that. Uh, really what struck me when we were talking was how you've used Microsoft as a tech stack when you're in your platform, which is extraordinarily advanced. Again, just amazing uh, from the UX UI standpoint point all the way down to the data architecture. <clears throat> Tell us a little bit about Microsoft's AI tools and services and how that's helped you build this kind of AI driven lab management system. Sure. So I think that Microsoft, Microsoft has done a great job democratizing technical access to AI, especially so for smaller companies. Uh, one could argue that they've done just as good of a job confusing everybody by trying to stick AI everywhere and everywhere, but there's no denying that their early interest and in investment in open AI and their robust cloud architecture kind of trivializes access for company of any size to the to today's most most modern, most advanced LLMs. For us, for, for the proficient lab specifically, AI is a strategic goal. What we've done so far is we, we digitized the very manual and low-tech laboratory compliance and training process which, you know, sometimes when I, when I say low tech, I mean, sometimes Excel files and sometimes literally jotting things down on a napkin. That's the kind of stuff we're dealing with. And we've approached that in a more sort of traditional way for now. We are, we, we, we made a purpose-built software. We made, we made a, what we think is a clever software, which helps guide people through the, what's, what's kind of a tricky process. That said, AI automation is the ultimate goal. We're envisioning a future where you can go through the entire process by essentially talking to the AI assistant and Microsoft's commitment to AI and their sort of interest in everything AI is an important building block of that. So I just wanted to say that as an example of that, Microsoft just this year, they've announced partnerships with other LLMs and they no longer offer now open AI LLMs that they're obviously very much connected with, but they're working with Meta some open source LLMs and I think even Amazon LLMs and they're clearly trying to be sort of like a vanguard and a, maybe a store for LLMs. I love that model and that makes a ton of sense being an LLM store, uh, LLM Mart or something like that. That's fantastic. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so look, obviously, Sauce, we've talked, you know, we've, we've vetted your technology platform. It's scaling fast. It's amazing to see just what it offers to folks in the lab systems world and how unique it is on so many levels. But one of the things that, that you've told me about is just how you're concerned about scalability. You want to be able to go from a thousand users, which you guys are almost at now, and then get to 10,000, 100,000, a million, et cetera. Um, and as everyone knows, the lab market in the, in the U.S. and around the world is, is ridiculous, almost $100 billion a year in lab management systems stuff. So it's just a huge demand for better systems like yours. How are you planning uh, to scale? What are you doing with the Microsoft tech stack to ensure that you're going to be able to scale properly? I think the scalability and performance is in general kind of a function of maturity of the entire tech stack. We're talking from, from, from the hardware infrastructure and cloud services and whatnot all the way to coding. And there's hardly anything in the market that's more mature than Microsoft technology. 
I, I like to say that us nerds can argue about anything, but my personal belief is that Microsoft makes the most convenient development and hosting and all those kind of tools. Uh, as you know, we're a young company and uh, we're able to stay ahead of all any of our scaling issues for now, but having the ability to sort of verti vertically and horizontally integrate at the click of a button is definitely a very welcome comfort for us. And when you think about that scalability, it sounds like you really have really thought about it and you've got, you're going to be able to scale nicely. How does the Microsoft tech stack help in ensuring security and compliance? Because that's the next big thing everyone's worried about is the cybersecurity. And there's been so many issues with that over the last six months in the US healthcare system. And what, what are you guys doing with uh, all of this kind of very, sensitive data that you're you're going to be running through your system that you are running through your system on a daily basis today yeah we kind of put the security at the forefront from the very early stages of our uh, enterprise here and uh, the proficient lab is right now hipaa compliant we don't actually technically have to be when I'm storing a patient information but we decided to go through this process anyway because for, for a couple of reasons, actually. One of them and arguably the more important one, the most important one being that going through um, a process like this kind of makes you, forces you to think about scenarios and the situations that you otherwise may not have thought about. I mean, an example being, is your database provider geo-replicating your data in a way that in, ends up in a different jurisdiction, a different country or something like that? And there's quite a few scenarios like this. And I feel like going through something like HIPAA and concentrating on security, it kind of makes you think in a way that any software company should be thinking Anyway, that said, all of this is to say that uh, security and compliance is kind of um, your tech stack and your hosting infrastructure, in my opinion, is just an integral to security and, and compliance as any of your day-to-day -day coding choices that you or your employees may make. And this is where Microsoft really comes in because by piggybacking all of their, off of their considerable resources and all of their uh, experience and obviously they have to be compliant and they've been compliant you're not starting from zero and i'm sure as anybody who's gone through HIPAA or anything similar like that knows it's such a convoluted and long process that any leg up any help you can get from anywhere is great that's the way it goes with this as well as that it's really about being able to leverage what your partners are providing for you and with you and so absolutely um, yeah, and, and so and that's one of the things that you've obviously found with using Microsoft Cloud. And when you're using the Microsoft Cloud infrastructure uh, for your health application that you for you know for the professional lab, what kind of support for data storage and for uh, performance and, and just high processing needs uh, are you seeing that? And again. Uh, this is so important. It's really critical because a lot of folks hear about a lot of cloud solutions, but we really haven't covered Microsoft over the last year. So we want to do it today. But if you could talk to us a little bit about that. So for us, I think it's kind of hard to overstate just how important Microsoft's just cloud has been for us. We're 100% managed services. We use 100% managed services, which means that a lot of the traditional upkeep tasks simply don't exist for us. Things like up, things and work, worrying about uptime, operating system updates, driver updates, a lot of these kind of nitty gritty details that are not particularly sexy and nobody talks about, we just don't have to deal with, they're off our plate. And if they're off our plate, we can concentrate ourselves on delivering the better product at the end of the day. Um, I'm old enough to remember what it was like to have a software company in the pre-cloud days, or at least in the, in the days of when the cloud was just nascent. And the army of people it took to keep the myriad of servers plugged in and not on fire, let alone functioning properly and serving what you want them to be serving to people. And uh, now, thanks, thanks to the Microsoft Cloud, we can, we can create same kind of production level infrastructure, same kind of environments. You could argue even better environments with multiple redundancies, fail saves, and what whatever you need for a production infrastructure with a fraction of the people, you know, sitting at home with the tablets, probably penciless, honestly. And that's just wonderful because we can concentrate our resources on something else and be capital efficient. 
Uh, and I think that another piece of what we consider to be cloud that I, I feel sometimes is missed when we talk about the cloud is sort of like our general business tools, which I think where Microsoft shines. And I'm talking about things like Word, Excel, and whatnot, and and, and maybe whatever tools that make your make your company run better. My personal belief is that ensuring that your colleagues are awful tools that make their lives easy and efficient as a technological leader in the company is just as important as ensuring that your product offering is in top shape. Because I think that um, if you're in, it's just a matter of time before your internal efficiencies and efficiencies result in external consequences. And Microsoft's cloud tools give us an ability to create processes where we can deal with onboarding, onboarding in minutes, where we can disperse tools to people as easy as, easy as ordering something from Amazon. And for, for a small company, that's a big force multiplier. Love it. And I think that's, you know, when you think about the Microsoft tech stack that you've developed in, and you think about where it's going next, you know, one of the interesting things to look at is just how much they're investing into AI. And it's really interesting to hear you talk about how they've invested in AI in a lot of different areas. They're not just putting open AI on their tech stack. They're really making sure that the, the Microsoft tech stack is going to offer its, its users and its developers a host of AI to build that together. And so as you're looking at some of the AI options that are out there and you're starting to see where the AI can actually help expand your product and bring in new features and functions, what are some of the, the future uh, AI technologies that you're viewing now? And where do you see that really being able to in, in improve your platform? That's an interesting question. I, I think when I think about AI, I'm sort of like, I, I try to be what I would call an AI realist. And every time I see that, oh, this company does that AI, does that AI, I always try to sort of investigate, what does that really mean? Does, is somebody just putting a text box with an AI assistant in it? Or is it actually core to the, to the software that they're trying to make? As I mentioned earlier, to us, it is a strategic goal, meaning that to us, it's a core of our future plans. So what I'm looking at is, I'm, to, to tell you plainly, I'm looking at all of these tools just getting a little bit better. Because especially when you're dealing with things like medical information, your, your AI LLMs hallucinating or making mistakes is not exactly ideal. So that's, I, I guess I would say that's where we're looking at. I'm, I'm very interested, considering how far we've come in a common couple of years, I'm very interested to see just how much better it gets in a couple of years and how much we can leverage it to turn it, you know, more or less traditional any traditional software into essentially just talking to a computer like Star Trek. This is great, Stas. And again, congratulations. I mean, it's so wonderful to see a digital health company scaling as quickly as you guys are. And again, for anybody in our ecosystem who either is uh, knows a molecule that needs help or is, knows people who are building molecules or knows an incubator or a lab system, who, or a, you know, a, an accelerator that needs a lab management system or who has companies that need, please get in touch with Stoss. It's a great platform. We're seeing institutions adopted dramatically and radically and quickly. Uh, and we're seeing the lines build up nicely for that. And um, thank you again, Stoss, for joining today. Thanks for having me.